In this video, we're going to be discussing entropy on the molecular scale. In the previous video, we talked about entropy, what entropy is. And so in this particular video, I want to go over entropy and how that's represented on a molecular scale. And we say molecular scale because we're talking about individual molecules versus a, a phase or as we looked at in the previous one. So Boltzmann described the concept of entropy on the molecular level. And one of the first things we have to understand, and this is something that we learned in the previous semester, where temperature and kinetic energy are related to each other. So as the temperature goes up, the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a sample will increase proportionally. And so now as we talk about Boltzmann, uh, he, he talks about molecules exhibiting several types of motions. The first, the first motion is translational. Translational is just the movement of the entire molecule from one place to another. It would be like you walking for, from one spot in the room to, the next, to a different spot in the room. Now vibrational is where you have those motions within the bonds of the, that the atoms are connected with in the molecule. And so uh, imagine your hand extended outwards and you shake your arm well that would so your hand is one atom your shoulders the the other atom and then connected in between the two you have your your bones and as those bones move back and forth that would create vibrations and so all molecules have vibrations if there's a bond there's a vibration and entropy is really dependent on on that part now rotational is about is how a a an atom is able to rotate around the bond in this case the sigma bond sigma bonds again are single bonds all all molecules have sigma bonds and so if one thing we should have remember at least is that when you have a sigma bond you have a molecule and in this case we have two x's the sigma, the sigma bond is found in between. Now, if we have a, a molecule that has a double bond, yes, it still has a sigma bond, but it also has pi bonds on top and bottom. Now, the difference here is the pi bonds do not allow for a 360 degree rotation, whereas if you only have the sigma bond, like this molecule here, this molecule, these, it's able to rotate 360 degrees around this bond. And so when we look at these two molecules, we, would, we could predict that this molecule here has a, a higher entropy than this molecule over here. That's something that we're going to use this information towards. So So rotation is just ability of of, uh, of the atoms to rotate around sigma bonds. Vibration is the vibra is the vibrational frequency you get in between the bonds of, of the two atoms, and then translational is just the movement across uh, space. So one of the things that Boltzmann want to do is he want to envision the motions of a sample of molecules at a particular instant time. So it'd always be like you taking a snapshot multiple times within a specific time period and looking at how the molecules move throughout space and how they mo their motions are. So he referred to this sampling as a microstate of the thermodynamic system. And a microstate is something that we're going to be talking about in the next slide here. So each thermodynamic state has a specific number of microstates. W is what represents a microstate. And entropy is represented by this equation where you have S, entropy is equal to K. K is Boltzmann's constant times the natural log of W. W is represented by the number of microstates. And so W is equal to N factorial divided by A factorial, B factorial, and C factorial. This equation doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but on the next 
slide, I, I will explain about what this particular equation means. But at least for now, we know what the equation is. So, and, how, and we're going to be using this to input. I'm hoping that everybody understands what a factorial symbol is. If you don't know what a factorial symbol is, if I have three factorial, that's it's just the same as me saying three times two times one. So you just multiply that across and that's what three factorial would be. So now we'll look at this picture here. And it was a lot to look at. We're only going to focus on A, the left side for now. So volume is, so that's what this L represents. This that represents one liter, two liters, and three liters. And if you notice that each one of these, there is a different number of energy levels. And that correlates to the number of microstates that are present. So if we focus on the first one here, all right, if we want to calculate W for the first one, the way we go about doing this is you, you count the number of dots. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So there's 10 dots on the first one. Then you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 dots on the second one. These little dots just represent where the molecules lie in reference to the energy levels. So the, the, the big N that you saw on the previous page is representing the total number of molecules. In this case, there's 15 of those. So we'd have 15 factorial. Now A, B, and C represents E1, E2, and however many energy levels there are for that specific system. So in the first one here, we have 10 factorial times five factorial. So we would calculate W here and in doing so we would get 3,000 and three microstates for the first uh, system which is just one liter. Now if we were talking about the, the entropy, the entropy of the system is dependent on first of all the fact the, uh, the number of microstates and secondly it's dependent on K. The, the, so so remember the equation is S is equal to K times the natural log of W. Sorry. K times the natural log of W where K is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin times 3,003, but there has to be a natural log in front of that. Now, we would multiply this through, and we get 1.11 times 10 to the negative 22 joules per Kelvin. So that's what we would get for the first system. So that's the entropy of the first system. Very small number, but still, we're going to look at the second system, and we're going to compare that to the first system and we're going to see how the entropy changes in relation to the two. So if we look at the second one where it says 2L, what we ought to see is that there are more energy levels. There's there's two times more energy levels than what we saw in the first one. So what does that mean? That means that, if, that there's got to be more microstates present. If there's more microstates, that must mean the entropy is going to increase as well. The question is how much is it going to increase? So, to go through and solve for this, we're going to have to have W again. So W is the 15 factorial stays constant in, in these three different sets, 1L, 2L, and 3L. But what changes are the, the denominator here. So we got 6 here, we've got 4, 3, and 2. So that's what we're going to do, 6 factorial, 4 factorial, 3 factorial, and 2 factorial. All right, so we need to calculate that for uh, for W. So go ahead and do that. Now, once you have that done, we're going to plug this into Boltzmann's equation: one point three eight times ten to the negative twenty three joules per kelvin multiplied by 
the natural log of what you get for W. And so doing the calculation here, what you ought to see is that, and I'm leaving these blank for a reason because I want you guys to do this. You ought to see an increase in entropy. Now, how much of an increase? Not a whole lot, but it's enough to make a little bit of difference in saying that, hey, look, for this volume that's twice as large as the first volume, you're going to definitely see an increase in entropy. Now, if we were to go to 3 and calculate it, theoretically speaking, we should see an increase in entropy as well because there's more microstates, there's more energy levels found in 3L. Now, if we jump over to the right side of this page, we see that we have 2L and 2L both have the same volume. But what's different here, one is at low temperature and one is at high temperature. And you can see as the hot temperature goes up to the high temperature, the more energy levels there are, the, again, the more microstates there are and the higher the entropy is going to be. So microstates is an important detail in relation to what we're talking about in reference to entropy and how much entropy a system might possess. So a couple things we can sum up here is uh, more particles there are, the more states you have, the more entropy. All right. So the more people you have present, the more disorder you're going to have present because there's more energy present. So the entropy itself goes up as a result. If you have a classroom of five people versus 50 people, it's going to be a lot easier to learn with the smaller number of people because there's less energy states present, less entropy. Higher temperature results, more entropy. Gas versus solid, less structure. So solids have, having more structure to them are going to have lesser entropy where the gases have uh, less structure. They're going to result in more entropy because there's more states present. Gases are very high in entropy. And so uh, as the number of microstates, the entropy tends to increase with an increase in temperature, volume, and the number of independently moving molecules. Now, the last thing I'm going to cover here are solutions. Solutions are where you have a, a salt that dissolves into it. And so most cases, the, the entropy of the solutions are going to increase because you're taking NaCl, which is a solid, and you're breaking it down to sodium ion and chloride ions. And so what you see is it's the breaking part, and so it's going to create more, more molecules that are present, more ions specifically. And so you're going to have a higher entropy. Now, here's where the, the, the tidal change here, the tides, if I can say, the tides change. Usually there's an overall increase in entropy. The exception is very highly charged ions. Why is that important? When I say high iron, high charged, I'm talking about iron plus three ions that have high charges like that. So the higher the charge, the more water molecules that are going to surround them and the smaller the, the entropy is going to change in relation to that of NaCl, which would not require quite as many water molecules to surround them. So that's it for this video. All right, we I will have another video posted uh, in the near future. This the other video we'll be talking about the third law of thermodynamics, and we will get into standard entropies. Thanks.